Welcome to Reader Seeks Romance Channel's Romance Roundup, the number one romance book Rex talk show. I am Liz Donatello. And I'm Libby Kay, author of the sweet romance series Buckeye Falls. Libby and I are sharing 2025 romance books on our to be read lists. Watch Romance Roundup on Reader Seeks Romance Channel and subscribe on YouTube. Listen to Romance Roundup on Podbean and all podcast apps. Viewers and listeners can email us at readerseeksromance at yahoo.com and follow us on Instagram at Libby K. Author and at Reader Seeks Romance. Hello, Libby. Hello, Liz. How are you? <laughs> good, good. It's interesting because in the last episode, we were complaining about how holiday books are coming out earlier and earlier, and we don't want to think so far ahead. But yet yep. we're covering 2025 <laughs> releases that are on our TBRs. So I feel like we're a big basket of beautiful contradictions. <laughs> I choose to think of it as we're just helping people plan ahead for the new year. <laughs> So we're doing it for them, not for us. Okay. It's very selfless, <laughs> really. Now, I wanted to uh, just mention up front my sources. NetGalley. I, I looked at NetGalley to see what books were coming up. I also looked at She Reads Romance Books. I also look at Natasha is a book junkie. I was doing Amazon searches. I was doing Goodreads searches. I always do Goodreads like, you know, best of mm -hmm. or anticipated yep. you know but yep. those are my um sources uh where did you uh what do you, what was part of your search history uh my search history was very selfish because i went to my wish list on amazon because oh, when i yeah. see things i mean goodreads I'm, I'm always on goodreads and i always add stuff yeah. to goodreads i'm actually doing mostly traditional this time um and i think it's just because um well i don't want to steal my own thunder here yeah. but i i am going some of these are either series continuations or authors i have enjoyed in the past so mm -hmm. i think just because of how the algorithms work with bookbub and goodreads they kept saying hey did you know so and so is a new book and so even okay. if i don't buy it i i put it on my amazon wish list as like my backup tbr <laughs> list just to, okay. you know keep me honest when I'm not sure what I want to read next. So gotcha. I'm actually relying on my own random personal list that I've found over the last couple of months. I think most of mine are the first half of 2025, which makes sense because some things might not be announced yet. But I got depressed because I'm like, oh my God, this is so exciting. And then it's like, oh wait, I haven't read half of the books I had for this year's TBR. So I'm like, well, we still got four months left. <laughs> I know. I feel as if someone is going to try to keep us honest and be like, you know, uh, you said you were going to read all these other books in 2024 and you never mention them on the show and you never you know <laughs> although we could get away with just saying well we didn't mention it because we read it and didn't like it that way we can cover ourselves but but then um, i'll feel bad <laughs> yeah but i was thinking about I was like how full of it am i that i'm you know like all oh, these are all on my tbrs i mean how many am i actually gonna read you know i, I know and and that is we'll have to live a million years because there's too many I mean, you yeah. can only, if you're watching this, you can only see one of my bookshelves. I've got others all around me and yeah. I actually have a stack by my bed, like a crazy book hoarder because I just can't help myself. And sometimes I think yeah. I'm going to wake up at four in the morning and read five books at the same time. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to see what you have because you have four. Yeah. And I have three, one of which I don't even have a title or a book cover for. So I was very, very picky. Uh, mm -hmm. In my search, and I've can I've even as twenty twenty four has gone on, I've been way more selective, and uh, yeah, so I'm I'm very excited to hear what you have to say yes. because I I think maybe it would appeal to me as well. So well, Libby, let the roundup begin. <laughs> Giddy up, Liz. Here we go. And I'm going to do mine in chronological order of release date. So I'm starting. Okay. Um, my first one is Beg, Borrow, or Steal by Sarah Adams. This comes out January 7th from Dell Press. This is book three in her When in Rome series, which, as I have raved over the last year, is uh, one of my favorite contemporary romance series right now. 
Um, and for those of you who have not listened to my rants and raves, uh, it's Rome, Kentucky, not Rome, Italy. So you're going to get the small town Southern vibes with this one. The tropes for this one are rivals to lovers. And I'm excited because the publisher actually said rivals and not enemies. Because I know we've talked about this before, that sometimes enemies doesn't feel right. And they're just in competition. They're not, you know, sworn enemies or something. So right. I like that automatically it said it was a rivals to lovers. I actually think that might have been why I picked it for the show. I'm like, yeah. The tagline for this one is two feuding second grade teachers and neighbors find themselves teaming up in this rivals to lovers romance set in Rome, Kentucky from best-selling author of the rule book and practice makes perfect. So um, love Sarah Adams writing. Um, so as soon as I saw this, of course, it was an automatic on my Amazon wish list. Um, so the general premise is this. Emily Walker, who, if you've read the series before, is one of the sisters of one of the original characters. Um, she hates having carefully crafted... Let me start again. <laughs> so I thought you were going to say carefully crapped. Yeah, that's why and I was, And I, I picked up. I was like, oh, this is going in a different direction. <laughs> carefully crapped up something. <laughs> oh, okay. General yeah. premise. And, oh, and piece. just another When I, I yeah. came across this title and I said, I bet Libby's going to mention it. So. Oh, yeah. Because as soon yeah. as I saw I just love her damn books. Oh, anyway. Uh, okay, so the general premise is this. Emily Walker, who we've met in the first two books of the series, she's the sister of one of the other leads, um, hates having her carefully crafted world disrupted by anyone. Most of all, her legendary nemesis, Jack Bennett. He's the opposite of the wonderful hero she dreams up in her double life as a romance author, which is why Emily was perfectly happy when Jack left Rome, Kentucky mid-school year with his fiance. The last thing Emily saw coming was Jack's return at the start of the summer after calling off the wedding and ending his relationship. But he's here to stay as both her colleague and her neighbor. Dun, dun, dun. Um, <laughs> Jack is glad to be back, eager to renovate his house and work on the next mystery novel under his best-selling pen name. But when he realizes he's now neighbors with the one woman who has always pushed his buttons, he discovers something he's even more excited about, thwarting Emily and her petty plans to sabotage his return. When their chemistry-fueled animosity is at an all-time high, Emily accidentally sends an email to their school's principal that could reveal her secret literary side hustle. She needs to steal back her manuscript, and Jack, she hates to admit, is just the man to help her. Surprisingly, he agrees to, but will the unlikely uh, alliance end their public rivalry or could it lead to a steamy plot twist they never saw coming? I'm sure that this is a super entertaining book, but I have to say again, book it's description. description. Yes. How much yes. are you going to give us? And yes. I know that that's not necessarily the author's choice to put all of that on the back of the book. Um, it's marketing. It's the publisher. Mm -hmm. But good Lord, like you would tell me the whole thing. I almost felt as if, you were just you were reading it. Reading yeah, like I was story to me. I was like, okay, yeah. Yep. No, I and I actually, it's funny because when I was reading this and I feel like, um, not to spoil it for the next ones I'm going to read, I feel like they're all basically, I feel like it's gone from a general vibe of the book to a actual real synopsis on the back of books. Yeah. And um, I, I can see it from both angles. Like as a reader, I was already hooked when I saw it was her book. I was like, all right, done. But right. for me- I was hooked when I saw that they were both authors. Yes. And I'm intrigued by the fact that the premise of this is that they're both secretive about it. So um, it's not a secret. I write under a pen name. So I'm curious to see how that is approached. It's not a, I don't, it's not a secret that I write. People know that I write. Right. But I'm curious to see how Sarah Adams covers that in this book. And now I'm wondering, is her name a pen name or is she really Sarah Adams? So there's all these little mysteries now that I'm going to be thinking about as I get ready to mm -hmm. devour this book, because if it's anything like her others, I'll read it in a day and a half and, you know, not pay any attention to any other aspect of my life because right. she's that good. But I am, I, like I said, I've loved the other books in this series. Um, I'm really anxious for the fourth one because there's four siblings and I'm assuming there's going to be a fourth one or I'm going to riot because there needs okay. to be a fourth one. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I, I love her writing. Um, it's always the perfect, she toes the line perfectly between like bordering on too sweet, not that I'm one to talk about too sweet, but too sweet, but she has a nice amount of um, sex and steam to it that it's like, ooh, hello. 
So um, I definitely, I just love her writing. Um, this town is adorable. The characters are relatably quirky. Um, and I'm excited because like with most romance series, you know, you fall in love with these other couples and it's nice to even just get a little snippet of them later on. So um, that is why uh, Beg, Borrow, or Steal by Sarah Adams is on my TBR must-reads for 2025. So Liz, what do you have for us? I have, and I'm not doing it in chronological order just to shake things up. <laughs> I have Once Upon You and Me, a Spicy Gay Age Gap Romance by Timothy Janofsky. I almost picked this one. <laughs> I've actually interviewed Timothy on Reader Seeks Romance interview show. And um, I read uh, two of his uh, books. You're a mean one. Matthew, Matthew Prince. Prince. Okay, good. I remember that. We read that in book that. club. Um, yep. A gay holiday uh, rom-com. And I also read Never Been Kissed. Both of them have younger characters. They're not YA or anything, but they're, you know, in their 20s. And this one, I was like, ooh, age gap. And one of them is a divorced uh, gentleman. So Once Upon You and Me is set to release on April 29th, 2025 by Harlequin Imprint Afterglow Books. Here's the blur. Charming fairy tale meets spicy bedtime story in this deliciously enchanting age gap LGBTQIA plus romance. The blurb goes heavy into like enchanting, charming fairy tale. And I was like, oh, is this a retelling? And I don't think it is. But anywho. It could just be marketing. You know just, what I mean? It could just be marketing, those marketers. <laughs> so here's what it's about. Taylor Frost flies across the country to help his boss, Amy, prep for her daughter's 16th birthday at the Storybook Endings Resort in the Catskills. A flirtation soon develops between Taylor and the resort's manager, Ethan, a rugged older man, who happens to be Taylor's boss, Amy's ex-husband. <gasps> Amy, yeah. <laughs> Therein lies the challenge of this romance journey. Amy would not approve of her assistant being romantically involved with her ex-husband, Ethan. Interestingly enough, the book description doesn't really give much more than that. Um, oh, really? Well, I, I was I, waiting for a lot more. <laughs> I know. I actually paraphrased a little bit, but there's really nothing else after that. Right. Surprising, right? Because we're used to yeah. getting basically everything. The, so then it just ends with, if only forbidden flings ever led to happily ever afters. So, I mean, Aww. obviously it does lead to a happily ever after. I enjoy Timothy's uh, work, his writing style, his steamy scenes. Uh, I really love the whole age gap thing, especially. Mm -hmm. And I love gay romance. Like I'm reading it almost exclusively right no, now. No, I know we keep trading book yeah. recommendations. <laughs> it's taken over my life. When there was a book description that didn't give me everything, I was like, oh, now I'm even more intrigued. So, yep. so yeah. So I am uh, very excited to read Once Upon You and Me by Timothy Janofsky. And that releases April uh, 2025 by Afterglow Books. Afterglow Books, their schedule has gotten more robust. I'm like, and are they? Yeah, they're a relatively new imprint, though, right? Isn't yeah. didn't they kind of start this year ish? Yeah, <laughs> they, they started in I think January or February 2024. So yeah. Oh, okay. So it yeah. is brand new then. Yeah, it is brand new. But they, every now and again, like I'm like I'm seeing them pop up more and more uh, with books coming out, and I they keep finding their way to me <laughs> that I'm like oh well, that's interesting <laughs> they keep finding their way to my eyes <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that like they find their way to me next <laughs> so what do you have for us Libby next up is a debut author so uh mixing it up a little uh this one's called let's call a truce by Amy Buchanan and this is coming out uh January 14th from St. Martin's Griffin uh this is listed according to Goodreads as a standalone um, and the tropes, this one does say enemies to lovers, and it's also a workplace romance and a single mother romance. And the tagline for this is, let's call a truce is a sexy contemporary romance about second chances at life, love, and it's bursting with humor and a touch of angst from debut author Amy Buchanan. 
I will be honest, the reason this first caught my eye is I used to work with someone named Amy Buchanan. Uh, it is not that Amy Buchanan. It is another Amy Buchanan. Uh, but when I saw it, I'm like, oh, I wonder if this is my Amy. And it's not. But I'm still excited because after I read it, I'm like, OK, OK, I'll see what's going on here. The general premise is after Juliana Ryan's husband dies unexpectedly, leaving her with two grieving kids and a stunted career from years as a stay at home mom, she has no choice but to make it work all on her own. But her confidence crashes around her when she overhears her condescending but infuriatingly attractive new colleague, Ben Thomas, talking about how her kids and inexperience are a liability to the company that they cannot afford. This sets off a feud between the two of them, and Juliana vows to prove him wrong. So we have a time hop in this description, huh? so giddy up. <laughs> two years later. Again, like the, these book descriptions, okay. I don't know. I can't. <laughs> why is why is there a time jump or in I mean, the back of the book? In the back of the book. Seriously? No idea. But it it literally says 2 years later. <laughs> no, this is too much. Go ahead, continue. <laughs> 2 years later, their feud rages on, but it may be charged with something they aren't willing to admit. When they're forced onto a career-making project together, Juliana has no choice but to call a truce. As their lives become more intertwined inside and outside the office, Juliana finds it hard to ignore Ben's uh, perpetual smile and charming determination. What started as a truce grows into more. And as boardroom clearing arguments turn into desk clearing kisses, could the man she deemed her nemesis actually understand her life and the stresses that come with it better than anyone else? So I'm intrigued by this because for a couple of reasons, number one, the name, but we're going to move on past that. I'm intrigued by the fact that this seems to be a single point of view because there's no description of Ben's perspective on the back of the book. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also intrigued that it has a two year gap because I feel like that as as the as an author and I'm sure the author has, you know, there has to be enough there that when it jumps ahead two years, it's not like, well, why would you work in a job where this was like this for two years? So I'm I'm really right. curious to see how Amy Buchanan handles this because I feel like there's a lot of potential here. And we did a show I know this year about single parent romances. There's just yes. something about the way that, that sh this is described. I feel like there's going to be some heartwarming scene where he saves the day. And um, in the sappy mood I'm in right now, that really uh, feels like it would uh, fit the bill. So okay. I don't, I'm a little pissed. I have to wait until, well, pissed. That's a little strong. I'm just disappointed that it, I have you, to wait. I was going to see you coming in hot <laughs> on pissed. this. I'm angry. Uh, no, but I'm just disappointed I have to wait until January because I feel like and we've discussed this off camera as well. I am definitely, my mood reading is getting a lot worse. Like I'm reading, and they're good books. I'm not complaining about the books, but I'm reading several books for different book clubs. And while they are entertaining, it is just not what I'm in the mood for right now. And so mm -hmm. I find myself, I hate to say enjoying it less, but you know, you're in the mood for something, but it's like when you go out to dinner, if you're in the mood for Mexican, you go out for Italian, you're not you know, it's not going to quite hit the spot. So I right. feel like that's kind of where I am. So it's a shame it's not coming out now because I'm kind of in the mood for something like that. So I'm hoping this mood will continue for the next five months. <laughs> right. I'm happy that this is yeah. a debut. It's a standalone. And I yes. kind of feel like I need more of that in my TBR. And maybe that would help with my inability to read a million books a year anxiety. So, um, but yeah, I am, I am cautiously optimistic and looking forward to my not coworker, Amy Buchanan's debut book, Let's Call a Truce, out January 14th. Mm -hmm. Where are you taking us next? <laughs> okay. I'm taking you on a journey because here's the thing. I am, not only am I being more selective about what I'm reading, I'm just yearning for anything that's different in any mm -hmm. way. I'm looking forward to reading Kimberly Lemmings' I Got Abducted by Aliens and Now I'm Trapped in a Rom-Com. I Got Abducted by Aliens and Now I'm Trapped in a Rom-Com is set to publish February 18th, 2025 by Berkeley. Interesting side note is that Kimberly Lemming was a self-published author and wrote a series oh. of these types of... Um, oh, so this... So, oh, wow, you said Berkeley. That's good for her. <laughs> yeah. We read uh, with Book Club, uh, Kimberly's, um, I think, book two in her Mead mm -hmm. Mishap series. That time I got drunk and yeeted a love potion at a werewolf. And that's Y-E-E-T-E-D, yeeted. So we read that in Book Club and it was, it was bizarre. It was... Uh, I enjoyed the humor. I enjoyed the mm -hmm. pacing. Mm-hmm. 
the only thing is, is that I'm not as I wasn't as interested in this type of monster romance that she had written. Someone had sex with a tentacle monster at some point, and I think someone was in love with like a dinosaur shapeshifter. So they were like shapeshifters and monsters. And it was yeah. just like crazy town USA as far as the plot. <laughs> like the plot didn't, was all, you know, very silly. This one is an alien. And I feel like maybe it's more my speed and maybe a bit more like down to earth. I don't know why I think that. <laughs> down to earth alien romance. <laughs> it's a down to earth alien romance, which would be a good blur. You should save that and send it to <laughs> send it to the author and be like, you can use this. <laughs> this is a di- but it might be crazy balls and it might not apply. That's true. Now, here's the thing. Normally I paraphrase the book descriptions because as we've noted, they could be very lengthy. Yes. This one, I'm reading the entire one because it is awesome. It is an awesome book description. So here's the blurb and the book description of I got abducted by aliens and now I'm trapped in a rom-com by Kimberly Lemming. Okay. Blurb. A hilarious and sexy romance about a woman who gets dropped on a strange planet only to fall for not one, but two aliens. (laughs) So I guess this would also be like a menage. This would be like a, uh, I like how this is already supposed to be down to earth. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I regret that I said that. Okay. No, I love it. Keep going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dorothy Valentine is close to getting her PhD in wildlife biology when she's attacked by a lion. On the bright side, she's saved. On the not so bright side, it's because they're abducted by aliens. In her scramble to escape, Dory and the lion commandeer an escape pod and crash land on an alien planet that has dinosaurs? Okay, there's more. (laughs) Okay. But but wait, there's more. (laughs) Dory and her new lion bestie, Toto, are saved in the nick of time by, by a mysterious and sexy alien, Saul. On their new adventure, they team up with the equally hot and equally dangerous Locke, who may or may not be a war criminal. Here's the thing. I'm laughing, but I would read this. I'm just laughing because compared to like, she's a single mom working in corporate America. My book sounds so boring. (laughs) This book is the scene stealer of 2025. That is, that is for sure. Okay. Whether it be trauma, fate, or intrigue, Dory can't resist the attraction that's developing in their trio. Dory learns more about how and why they've all ended up together, battles more prehistoric creatures than she imagined, she imagined zero, and questions if she ever wants to go back home to Earth in this hilarious and steamy alien romance adventure comedy romp. So again, I'm looking for different. And I, I honestly, I am very intrigued and I like... Um... We don't read, or I don't read a lot of Minaj books, and that is um, <laughs> on my list of improvements for the new year is to uh, have more well-rounded romance. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't, I don't know if it's. I'm assuming it's some kind of poly love story. I mean, it sounds like it, unless Dor- unless Dory is just in love with the two aliens and. They're both in love with her, but they're not in love with each other because usually in poly, like everyone's in love with each yeah, other. Every, but, yeah. So this will be interesting. Um. Yeah, so I am excited and very curious. And intrigued. And intrigued (laughs) by Kimberly Lemmings' I Got Abducted by Aliens and Now I'm Trapped in a Rom-Com, releasing by Berkeley, February 18th, 2025. I don't even know how to follow that. (laughs) Well, you're going to have to. So go ahead, Libby. What do you got? uh, I'm going to try my best. Okay. Maybe this actually is a good follow-up because mine is a little um, out there as well. So my next must read that I'm so excited for is Scythe and Sparrow by Bryn Weaver. This is out February 11th from Zando Press Slow Burn Line. Um, This is book three in the Ruinous Love Trilogy. And um, in case you missed it before, um, I'm still obsessed with Butcher and Blackbird, which I read earlier this summer. It's the first in the series. The tropes of this book in particular are, these are all listed on the book description, by the way. Friends with Benefits, Dark Rom-Com, Forced Proximity, Hurt Care, and Touch Her and Die vibes. So judging from how the first one went, and admittedly, the second one is uh, at the top of my TBR. I haven't read it yet, but I don't care what happens in that one because I'm already committed. I just, 
there is something about these three brothers and this it's it's basically romance and horror mixed together. It's graphically sexy. It's graphically violent. It's fabulous. So the tagline is circus motorcycle performer Rose meets lonely small town doctor Fion after a night of murderous adventure goes awry. That's all you need to know. <laughs> oh, my. There's a circus involved. I just mentioned. There is a circus. Oh, my God. Okay. I just mentioned on an episode of First Date uh, out now on Rudy Seek's Romance Channel, um, I mentioned to the authors that I spoke with that I would like to read uh, more circus romance. I've read one that I told you about off camera mm -hmm. that I did not care for. It was Crazy Balls. Like, it, I liked it and I didn't. I still have to read the first book. Um, oh, the first one's so good. <laughs> and I don't want to give too much away because I know I keep mentioning it in passing, but I'll I'll wait till our but best. This sounds like such up my alley. I love oh, Laura yes. and I love and I dark don't know, things. I don't know how it is because I haven't read the second one yet. I don't know if it's one of those where you can read it as a standalone and just okay. have a good time. Um, but the first one's so damn good. Like I, I, I the first one I did hybrid reading. I listened to it mm -hmm. when I was doing a long drive um, and then I finished it because I had the library book. And so I started it with the actors and oy vey, like the, the guy, I forget the narrator, but the guy, he's Irish. And it was just like, I almost had a car accident. I was like, oh my God, like it was so ridiculous, this book. So I already, <laughs> you know, I, I already have my, uh, yeah. you know, my, my hold on for this one. I'm so excited. Um, the premise of this one is Dr. Fionn Kane is running from a broken heart. One he hopes to mend in small town, Nebraska far away from his almost fiancé and his derailed surgical career. It's a simpler life, head down, hard work, and absolutely no romantic relationships. He wants none of the circus he left behind in Boston until the real circus finds him. The circus finds him? That's so ominous. Isn't it good? God, I'm so excited. <laughs> Uh, so the second half of this description is motorcycle performer Rose Evans has spent a decade on the road with the Silveria Circus, and it suits her just fine, especially when she has the urge to indulge in a little murder when she's not in the spotlight. But when a kill goes awry and she ends up with an injured leg, Rose finds herself stuck in Nebraska and at the home of the adorably nerdy town doctor. The problem is not every broken heart can be sewn back together. And the longer you stay in one place, the more your ghosts are bound to catch up. I, okay. Awesome. So, and again, not to give it away, but we do briefly meet Rose and Fionn at the end of the first book. I'm not giving oh. anything away. It's oh, just okay. a very quick little meeting. Okay. So you already know as a reader, if you've read the other ones that like something's clearly up here. I love the relationship with the three brothers. I love the fact that these are, um, and I know I've talked about this a lot. I am a huge, like, I love mystery thriller and, and true crime and stuff like that. That's my palate cleanser when I read too many sweet romances. It's like yeah. time for something a little dark. So the thing I loved about this, the first book is it came at the perfect time when I just felt like I needed something absolutely crazy and it fit the bill perfectly. And so I am, I, I will read the second one very, actually, no, I'm talking about it. I might read it right now, uh, but I'm very excited to see what they do with Rose and Fionn. And I cannot wait to read this book. We've gone from space to murderers and circus performers. What do you have next, Liz? This is a brief shout out to Alicia Grossman. Alicia mentioned to us in our Zoom Collins episode that the next release in her Once Upon the East End series is Beauty and the Beast inspired. I so know, I'm so excited. <laughs> I oh my, I can't wait. I'm super excited to read the Beauty and Beast inspired book three uh, in Once Upon the East End series. It is a Jewish historical romance fairy tale retelling. That's the whole series. They're all retellings. <laughs> According to Felicia's website, book three is set to release sometime in 2025 by Forever Publishing. There's no book cover. There's no title. But I always love Beauty and the Beast retellings. I Me love too. Felicia's writing style and her historical romances take place in the Jewish community. So there's a mm -hmm. lot of uh, mention about traditions and, and the culture in Regency era uh, England that are just new to me. A lot of that is, yeah. is new. And it's, and usually is not mentioned in other historical romances. So it's- Absolutely, it's, yeah. I feel like there's definitely a market for that. And Felicia is a real sweetheart. I've interviewed her. We've talked to her. Mm -hmm. She lives in Ohio. She's, you know, in the yeah. uh, Cleveland area. So we love her and I can't wait to read Felicia Grossman's uh, book three. 
in Once Upon the East End series. That comes out in 2025. Beauty and the Beast retelling. I'm here for it. So what else are you looking forward to reading in 2025, Libby? Okay, this one, and I think, I don't know if I've actually talked about her on the show, but I'm a longtime fan. Um, this is Rachel and Solomon's new one. Um, it's called What Happens in Amsterdam. It comes out on May 6th from Berkeley. Um, from what I can tell, it is a standalone. The tropes include marriage of convenience, second chance romance, and my favorite, tenant landlord. There's the potential for a hopeless situation. I am excited for you. <laughs> because first of all, is that a new trope now? Tenant landlord? Is that what you said? It is literally listed by the publisher on both Goodreads and Amazon when I went to follow up on it. So I think wow. this is a thing. We have a name now for what you love, which is yep. someone is unhomed and yes. needs a place to stay and then love blooms. I'll give the general premise. Danny Dorfman is looking for an escape. She's not expecting a new job to take her all the way from Los Angeles to Amsterdam. But after recently getting dumped and fired, she's determined to make a fresh start. But at the end of a disastrous first week, the big move is looking like an even bigger mistake, especially when she crashes her bike into, and I'm going to hopefully not butcher this, but I can't make any promises, Wouter Van Leeuwen, her family's handsome Dutch exchange student from 10 years ago. Her first love until he unexpectedly ghosted her. Wouter is at a crossroads of his own. In order to inherit his gorgeous family home on the canal, he needs to get married. And when Danny's job falls apart, she needs a visa. Danny is certain Amsterdam is just temporary, but could the charming quirks of her new city and a second chance at love become her reasons to stay? I am so excited for a lot of reasons. First okay. of all, I have loved everything else I've read by Rachel and Solomon. Um, the X talk and weather girl are still too... Automatic recommends if people are looking for a contemporary uh, romance. Her writing is so heartfelt. Um, her character development is so tender. And the fact that she really did move to Amsterdam with, I believe, her husband or partner or whoever. Oh. Um, I love the fact that her writing has always made me feel like I'm in Seattle or wherever. It, it definitely took. I remember the weather girl, I think it was in Seattle or one of them was. But I, the way she describes Seattle, the way she describes scenery I love Amsterdam. It's one of my favorite places I've been. Um, so I love the fact that we're going to get to see it through her eyes as an expat writing a character who's an expat. And I absolutely love the fact that it's like a former exchange student thing. There's, this is to me, this is a, a different take on the, you know, high school crush or college crush thing. I, I love that this is a different spin on that. So I am I am just so excited to read this book. And the cover is adorable. Uh, it is absolutely charming. It yeah. is it is one of my favorite covers I've seen. Whether she wrote it or not, just the cover alone would have made me pick it up. But um, I, yes, I just, I love all of Solomon's books. Mm -hmm. um, this just sounds delightfully adorable. And her books are always, they just have this like poignancy to them that it just, ugh, it's so good. I can't, I can't wait to read it. I know Rachel Lynn Solomon has a very good track record with you and with other readers. So I'm sure yeah. it's very well executed. For me, that's a bit of a turnoff uh, when the marriage of convenience is caveat in a will. Yeah. But in this case, it's a caveat to get to the landlord tenant trope, which we all know is my new favorite trope. <laughs> yes. The end game aligns with what you like to read. So I'm happy yes. for you. Thank you. <laughs> you love that for me. <laughs> I love that for you. For me, I'd, I'd, I'd prefer to wait till you read it. And then you. OK, let me know. well, I will report back. <laughs> As you should. <laughs> and um, so now that that is all. So that's, yes, that's all she wrote for now. And that's our roundup. Watch Romance Roundup on Reader Seeks Romance Channel and subscribe on YouTube. Listen to Romance Roundup on Podbean and all podcast apps. Thanks for joining us, Romance Readers. Happy reading, everyone.